Hello everyone, this is Sirius Trivia, collaborating with Creative Assembly to bring you a brief overview of everything coming in patch 1.7, which will be released alongside the new Fates Divided DLC, set to launch on March 11th. And since Fates Divided centers on the period around the Battle of Guandu, fought between Cao Cao and Yuan Shao for the control of the North, it is no surprise that both factions are receiving major overhauls to their existing faction mechanics in this patch. And that is where we will start. For Cao Cao, his credibility faction mechanic is no longer limited to simple manipulate and proxy war, as you can now use it for schemes, which are plans with various effects that can be used to target other characters, factions, commanderies, and armies. The number of schemes you can have active at any given time is limited both by your credibility resource and the number of spies you have unlocked as each spy slot will provide you with a pawn, which is necessary to enact any scheme. In addition to schemes, credibility can also now be used in diplomacy as a means to swing deals in your favor. Now, while Cao Cao's rework is focused on scheming, Yuan Shao's rework is focused on improving his captain retinues, as they will no longer just be cheap units that you recruit to rush down your opponents in the early game, with the new Captain Armory mechanic, each Captain Retinue will feel unique as you can now spend your lineage points to purchase bonuses that range from basic upgrades like gaining 20% melee damage to powerful game-changing bonuses like being able to replenish on enemy territories and much much more. On top of improving each individual Captain Retinue, which you can personalize by renaming them, there are also missions for Captains that act like milestones that will allow for faction-wide improvements for all captains throughout a campaign. And aside from these exciting changes coming to our two feature factions, all factions can enjoy the new Faction Council rework, where instead of having your Faction Council making you do annual missions for satisfaction and other small bonuses, now you can truly experience the life of a lord as each of your council members will present you with up to two plans at the start of each year for you to choose from, and they will go into effect right away since why else are you paying for their salaries? And depending on who is sitting on your faction council, the plans being presented can be quite different, with some effects ranging from launching rebellions in a foreign territory to rerolling a character's trait. Then, next to the faction council icon, Han factions will also be getting the Imperial Intrigue in this patch, as the Emperor will now play a bigger role in the game. First off, when Emperor Liu Xie comes of age in 197, the Imperial Intrigue will become activated, as Han factions across the map have to start dealing with how the Emperor views their faction. Should you rule his land justly by providing surplus food and positive public order, the Emperor will grant you useful faction-wide bonuses, like corruption reduction. But if you mismanage your territory or wage war against other Han factions, then you will lose the Emperor's favor. And should you be the faction in control of the Emperor, the Imperial Intrigue mechanic becomes even more important for you, as a low Imperial Intrigue will allow the Emperor to abandon your faction and escape, while high Imperial Intrigue will allow you to use these points in highly favorable diplomatic deals that can force other Han factions to do your bidding. Lastly, if you have control of the Emperor when you reach the final rank of King, you will now be given the option to restore the Han, as your faction leader will step down, and a non-deployable Liu Xie will become your faction leader with his own unique bonuses and a specially designed skill tree. And speaking of ranking up, Another new feature coming in this patch is the ability to customize your faction bonuses when you rank up, as each rank up will now grant you prestige points that can be invested to gain additional assignments, administrators, trade agreements, and so forth. This allows you to truly customize your faction to your desired playstyle, and as an added bonus, at certain milestones, you can gain additional bonuses to enhance your desired playstyle like gaining additional trade influence when you focus on gaining more trade agreements. Now aside from these major changes to gameplay, there are quite a few new legendary characters joining the roster. First, we have Yuan Shao and his family, that includes his eldest son Yuan Tan 
and his favorite son Yuan Shang, and Lady Zhen, who is the wife of his middle son Yuan Xi. Aside from his family, leading some of his new unique units are his generals Wen Chou, Yan Liang, and Zhang He. Then on Cao Cao's side of the conflict, we can see Cao Cao's cousin Cao Ren, his son Cao Pi, and his general Yu Jin. Lastly, Fa Zheng also joins the fray as a strategist to Liu Zhang before joining Liu Bei later on in history. Then of course, beyond these new arrivals, patch 1.7 also brings a bevy of balance changes and bug fixes, and some of the highlights are that coming of age is now 16 for all chapter packs, so turn 77 is when you want to grab Sun Ren in the base game. Gate passes are also improved as they now will provide a commerce income bonus for adjacent commanderies. In terms of battle balances, morale and fatigue are getting a big overhaul as generals will now have at least 50 morale, so Zhang Fei will no longer rout after getting a paper cut. Fatigue regeneration while idle is increased, and fatigue gain from combat is decreased. But should you become fatigued, your units can lose up to 30% of their damage and 12 points of morale when exhausted. Units that are routed will now vastly increase the chance of chain routing, and routing units will also take double damage. Cavalry and range units are both getting nerfs in this patch, as cavalry will do less damage on charge, but will now run farther into the unit than before, so you have a better chance to charge through a unit, allowing for easier cycle charging. Armor piercing damage, reload speed, and accuracy for all bow units are reduced. Tigers are getting a massive nerf to their charge damage, and morale impact of flaming maces are also reduced. Oh, and cow traps will now lose 90% of its damage. In terms of bug fixes, some of the major ones are that Lü Bu's momentum mechanic will now correctly account for successful duels, Sun Ce's ambition will now correctly track if a player has gained a region through diplomacy, Liu Hong can now annex at tier 3 of Dynasty, peace with alliances can be achieved now, and mercenary contract will once again provide rewards. And to see the full list of bug fixes as well as changes coming in patch 1.7, please check out the link to the patch note in the description below. Also, make sure to check out Fates Divided on Steam, where you can get a 10% discount if you pre-order right now. Subscribe to the Total War channel to stay up to date with the latest Three Kingdom news. This is Serious Trivia, and it's been a pleasure to partner with CA to bring you all this latest patch note, and I hope we meet again.